Yeah, okay. Neuroscience is science, as we know it, about the brain and the mind. So it is a study, scientific study, with proof done on humans and non-humans, on behavior, on sciences of thinking, and everything you do with the brain. Uh, my childhood dream was in fact becoming an animal doctor. Because I used to take care of cats and you know, little animals and all that. I only uh, became interested in neuroscience at the age of 26. This was my Sifu or my boss, uh, Professor Luc Kaliao from Belgium. He's the one who just turned me 360 degrees and made me love neuroscience. It was daunting. Uh, it was tough because neuroscience is not science that I learned 20 years ago when I was a young person. Was, it's not the same science in 2013. It has changed tremendously. So it was daunting, it was hard, it was difficult to understand. And even as I speak today, the sciences change. You know, I read the journals tomorrow and what we said two years ago is not true anymore. I did not expect that I would fall madly in love with neuroscience, becoming totally crazy and passionate about neuroscience. So on my return from overseas to Malaysia, I decided to start uh, courses. Uh, the first course I started was a course in neurosurgery. Then there was a course counseling neurology. And then my last bastion was doing pure neuroscience, research neuroscience. And I had to do this in a place called Kota Baru, Kelantan, not Kuala Lumpur, you know. So that was really challenging. Uh, because, you know, the general mindset in Malaysia is that everything good has to happen in KL. You have to be centralized. So I fought that system. In fact, I go around to secondary schools and even primary schools and I tell students that not all good things have to happen in Kuala Lumpur. It can happen in Penang, it can happen in Johor Bahru, it can happen in Kuching, Miri, Bintulu, Kudat, and it can also happen in Kota Baru. My current research is focused on numerous things. We call it translational because we cannot look at a certain problem or disease in its, its single aspect. So I look at the uh, chemistry part, I look at the biology part, I look at the physics part, I even look at the computer science part. So I have become a person who is a, a master of none, jack of everything, you know. Yeah. You see this, this couple, the wife who has been taking care of her husband for the last 25 years, bedridden, you know, he can't even walk a step without the wife holding, he can't even swallow, he can't even drink. And you do this, uh, you insert electrode into a certain nuclei in the brain. You hit jackpot, you switch on the battery because the micro stimulation tells you that you're in the right part of the brain. Then you stimulate it with a little battery and voila, the guy suddenly is a new person. He smiles, he walks and he doesn't need his wife's help anymore. And the wife gets lonely because she's been helping this man for the last 20 years. But technology has solved the problem about the men walking around, but I have not been able to solve the problem how to make the wife like the husband again. Because she sees in front of him a totally new person that she did not recognize because she's been taking care of this invalid for the last 15 to 20 years. You have to remember that the brain does not work alone. You have right hemisphere, left hemisphere, you have the two cerebellum, the brain stem, you have neurotransmitters and receptors, and they're like doors opening and close. So if you keep an uh, 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 electrode chronically stimulating the brain, you may get more side effects than bad, bad effects, because the brain needs to rest. That's why we go to sleep. That's why we live. So they, we, we still need to do more studies. Okay, right now, as we know it, physiotherapy is like a little sample, one for all. But remember, one, two, three, four, five, six people in this room, we are all different. And if we all became ill, there will be six different techniques to do physiotherapy in all six of us. But unfortunately, because we have not come to that level yet, especially in Malaysia, we do the same physiotherapy for all six of us. So therefore, sciences has to be very uh, person-specific. And physiotherapy has also to be person-specific. So I think that's the challenge of physiotherapy in the future through neuroscience. In Malaysia, we have the Malaysian guidelines to assess someone who's coma. 
The Malaysian guidelines is unlike the guidelines that are present in developed countries where they do a, use a lot of technology, you know, imaging, electroencephalography, etc., etc., which we do not use it in the Malaysian guidelines. But if one used it, one would find that a comatose patient might still be having a reactive brain. So one is determined as having a reactive brain. Is he comatose or not? So then human ethics comes in. Because as long as the heart doesn't stop beating, the person theoretically is not dead. But we use the word brain death. That's why we have transplants. Because when someone is brain dead, he is legally dead. And if you can prove that by certain tests, therefore uh, one may be able to do transplantations. Now your question is about euthanasia. Okay. Euthanasia is something when you off the ventilator because you think that the person is in pain or the person uh, can't receive any more medical treatment any, uh, at, at the moment because everything has been exhausted and the person who's lying on that bed has no chance or hope of living again, normal life. So the question about switching off the ventilator to let someone you know, pass away would have to depend on the family, would have to depend on the doctor's test, especially in Malaysia, we follow the Malaysian guideline to determine whether the patient is clinically dead or not. You know, in the West, it's not only clinical dead, but they use lots of technology to determine whether someone should be alive or dead. Just like switching off the ventilator uh, of Mandela in South Africa, there's lots of discussion on that. Should we off the ventilator? But he might still be alive. That's why I said to bring Mandela off from his bed to, and put him into a machine is also not practical. So one has to do the basic clinical test. And the basic clinical test shows that he, has, he is clinically brain dead. So the family may decide two things. With the, with the, the consent of the doctor, I mean switching off the ventilator and seeing whether he breathes spontaneously. If he doesn't, then the heart will stop after minutes or maybe hours. Or the person could donate his organs to other people. You know, that's one way when the person is declared brain dead. So I would say, I would say euthanasia is a very ultra left way of settling things where the person before he goes off may be able to donate his organs to help other human beings. Then we will not use the word uh, euthanasia because the chap is already brain, brain dead. And once he's brain dead, I think switching off the ventilator is logical by the act of law in the real world. Okay? Even in Malaysia now, people who study neuroscience can come from an arts background. He can be an artist, he can be a musician, he can be a psychologist, he can be a teacher, he can even be a farmer because we use the mind for everything. We use the mind to eat, to sleep, to fall in love, and even when we go to the WC, we use the mind for everything. And we can study the mind from in its pure science form, in its applied science form, and also in its arts form. So I think even you do not need to be a 4.0 CGPA to study. You, know, you have to be passionate about it. If you're passionate about anything, even you can, I think, succeed in anything, not even in neuroscience, Every, everything else. Yeah, the hype and all that. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes. I think we have to be very down to earth when we study neuroscience. We have to give it a human face, human value, human emotions. Uh, you know, when we read, uh, when we look at movies, there are a lot of little hypes there, a little bit over here, a little bit under here, and it gives us a false impression what neuroscience is. Not only neuroscience, what science is. So science is about being logical, being practical and may, making it cost effective and uh, ready to be used for us humans or even non-humans, animals, fish, whatever. Yeah. All of them have brains, even the fish has a brain. Yeah.